Huh? Huh? It's going to sound like I was saying that on purpose because he edited it. Oh, yeah. Like, so awesome. He's so great. Oh, we really wow. like him. As soon as he, he does pays, such a good job. Keep and doing your thing, Alex, if you're listening. Alex, you're <laughs> awesome. I will call oh. you. <laughs> okay. Um, do I say my therapist is out? Welcome to My Therapist is Out, an open space therapy collective podcast. We are your hub for queer and trans mental health care. Each episode, we'll speak with one of our therapists or collective members and chat about a mental health topic using a queer lens. And I am your host, Renee Johnson, licensed professional clinical counselor, art therapist, and founder of Open Space Therapy Collective. Today, we're chatting with Debbie White. Debbie White is an art therapist and has practiced in New York and California. Debbie specializes in working with teens and parents who want to support them. <laughs> Welcome to the Open Space Survey Collective podcast. We have uh, our therapist Debbie White with us today. We are going to th- talk about when it's time to start therapy and how you know. Mm-hmm. That is always tricky. It yeah. is. I mean, so if you have uh, your tribe that you vibe with, aka your support system, sometimes they're the ones that let you know in a loving way that, hey, I think it's time that you go talk to someone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What? I mean, we're lucky we have a tribe like that, Exactly. Right? And like our... Not many people have that. So mm-hmm. if you don't have that, some of the clues could be if you feel stuck in your life at the moment, you feel overwhelmed, depressed, maybe you're crying all the time, you don't want to talk to anyone, you isolate, stay by yourself. I mean, there's a lot of behaviors that you exhibit that you didn't exhibit before and those are also cues Mm -hmm. um so yeah if you don't have that tribe that you can rely on you can look at for what yourself needs are and um yeah and then we'll work on maybe another episode how do we go about finding Mm -hmm. a support system Mm -hmm. when you don't have a lot of friends yeah that is a really good one that we will definitely talk about yeah what does isolation look like because i feel like there's the big somebody's sitting in a dark corner and not leaving, which sometimes happens. We've all been there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like, what is maybe low grade isolation? Look well, like? I don't even like to put levels on it. Right. I think the biggest indicator is if it's a behavior that you don't normally exhibit. So I'm a firm believer that sometimes alone time is good. Mm-hmm. It's healthy. If you just don't want to be people in or bothered with anyone and don't feel like you want to even get dressed. Maybe you had a rough week and you just want to stay in your bed for five hours and watch TV. That's fine. No judgment. However, if you're doing this consistently for days, Mm -hmm. for weeks, you're having a hard time showering, doing the basic uh, ADLs. Activities of daily living. Activities of daily... I just know how to say ADL. (laughs) Activities of daily living. If you're having a hard time doing that um, and your mood is down, that's an indicator. Mm -hmm. Um, But they're normal. Like That's why I don't go by ranges because it could be just at that moment. Mm -hmm. It could be based on a life situation. It could be that you're new to a a town and don't know anyone. And so you tend to be by yourself. doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing, but when your mood is affected by it, when you can't do things that you normally do, when you're feeling hopeless, helpless, overwhelmed, like even thoughts of suicide, Mm -hmm. that's the extreme levels, I guess, when I would say you have to reach for help. Yeah. And even, you know, as you say, like moving to a new town, like forced isolation or forced alone time can bring on like a lower mood. Yeah. I know every time like I move somewhere new, it's, there's a period where I have to like prep myself of like, okay, I'm going to have a lot of alone time. I don't have my community yet. Mm -hmm. It's going to take time. It will come. Mm -hmm. But in that space, maybe it is time to see a therapist. So you do have an extra support Mm -hmm. built in. Yep. And also make uh, dates on like FaceTiming with family members, phone calls with Mm -hmm. familiar folks that you are familiar with and maybe check out local areas that you can go and visit. Like mm-hmm. museums are great. I'm mm-hmm. farmer's market. Mm-hmm. When I moved here from New York, that was my big thing was I looked forward to Sunday, just walking up and down the farmer's market. I didn't buy anything 
per se, but mm -hmm. it gave me a sense of I'm in a community and I was trying to make an adjustment. Um, and then, of course, I did have some friends here, but <laughs> I didn't realize how huge California <laughs> is. <laughs> um, passive thoughts of suicide is a big yes. indicator of like, uh, I don't want to get out of bed it can be a passive thought of that. I to don't want to do fantasizing this. about the world would be better without me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it doesn't I'm, have to be, I'm going to X, Y, Z. Yeah. That's it's, it's passive suicidal thoughts is just even wondering mm -hmm. what it would look like if I didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And that is also an indicator. I remember now. <laughs> mm -hmm. the pandemic taught us a lot oh, yeah. about um, isolation, quarantine. People didn't realize when we all had a quarantine, just how isolation, what it felt like for someone who probably was doing this when there was no quarantine. Mm -hmm. And so there was a spike mm -hmm. in depression and anxiety during uh, almost three years of dealing with this pandemic. Sometimes people had a hard time getting back out mm -hmm. and doing things. And so definitely those are signs too mm -hmm. of seeking professional help. Yeah. 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 In, coming out of the pandemic, I mean, we're not out of it, but more out of it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, myself included, struggled with like social anxiety and mm -hmm. like, oh, I've been so isolated for so long. How do I have a conversation? What is eye contact again? And being in therapy and using therapy to practice what that is again mm -hmm. has been a huge help, I know, for me personally. Mm -hmm. And being like, okay, this is how to socialize. This is how to like manage anxiety. I can name it around um, this therapist or this group therapy situation to help exercise some of that back. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that for me, who is an extrovert, but I have my moments where I'm introverted. The pandemic took its toll on me because I couldn't hug. Mm. And that's the thing that I love to do is hug my peoples. And now I'm told you can't hug, you can't do this. And so that was strange to do when you come out of it, right? And it's something I still struggle with. Like, do I hug? Now I'm more apt to like elbow. I still do the elbow or the hand hug. <laughs> the hand hug because... You know, everyone's comfort levels are different, mm -hmm. right? Um, I was also going to say that a therapist, we need to clarify this, right? Mm -hmm. So seeking a therapist, a therapist's role is to be objective, to be here for you wholeheartedly. No judgment, no shame, no guilt. They're there just to help you process things through. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important to say, yeah. which probably leads to a question on. Yeah, it's a really, you know, we, I feel like we use oh, we overuse safe space and kind of are flippant about it. Mm -hmm. But if you're walking in the room and it's, I just feel weird or I don't like how I'm feeling or I'm confused. Like for me, confusion is usually a really good sign that it's mm -hmm. time for me to go back. Mm -hmm. um, your therapist is, is there to just be on your side and there should, should be, if they're a good therapist, just down to roll with what, where you're at and what you're bringing in, into the room. Mm -hmm. um, and there's not a secret agenda other than like helping you feel the way you want to feel. Yeah. And if you don't feel comfortable with that therapist, do not feel bad to say our time has passed and find someone else. Y you have to find the person that's going to fit you. Mm -hmm. So also before you find a therapist, it's okay to call mm -hmm. and, and just have a phone consult for a couple with a couple of people to see how you connect mm -hmm. on the phone. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. I like I think that's really important is to talk to a couple of different people. Yep. Because every even if it, you've got four different people that say that they do the same type of therapy, it's gonna feel four different kind of ways mm -hmm. because they're all their own person and personality and you're gonna click with a different kind of person. And mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily mean that they're a bad therapist or a good therapist or you're not good at therapy or anything. You mm -hmm. need to find one, uh, somebody who knows what they're doing, but also two, somebody that you like and that you click with. Yeah. I mean, even down to, do you like their voice? Mm -hmm. Is this someone you're going to have to listen to? <laughs> <laughs> what if you don't like their yeah. voice? It's like, yeah. hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah. You have to be able to stare at this person for an hour a week. Mm -hmm. And are you comfortable doing that? Um, 
And sometimes you can't even put to words why you don't click with a therapist and that's okay. Yeah. Because more than likely that therapist could be reminding you of a family member mm -hmm. that you just don't click with or somebody from your past. You don't have to process that. Mm -mm. It's just a simple, mm, I'm not feeling the chemistry here and move on to the next mm -hmm. person. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really important thing is mm -hmm. it doesn't matter why you don't click. If mm -hmm. it doesn't click, if you're not feeling it, if it's a, you're doing the standard phone consultation and you're talking with them, you're like, meh, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Go to the next one. Or if you get in the first session or the first few sessions and you're like, I just, this isn't working and you don't need to know why. You just need to know it's not working and move on. Mm -hmm. um, a good therapist will understand that. They won't take it personally. Yeah. Um, and if you're not in a place where you can say, hey, this isn't working for me and you need to ghost your therapist, it's okay to ghost your therapist. You do whatever you got to do. Yeah. Be ferocious in protecting your <laughs> mental health. Yeah. 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 We get um, a lot of um, people calling in being like, oh, I want somebody that's a similar gender identity as me or a similar racial identity as me mm -hmm. or has a similar shared experience as I am or a similar mm -hmm. age. And that's great. That's fine. Have those stipulations. It doesn't have to mean anything. Yeah. Um, just figure out who you're comfortable with. Yeah. And at the same time, like I've been on the end where I've had a client on a phone consult and I kind of like felt like, oh yeah, I'm not clicking for this mm -hmm. person until I suggested that I can refer them mm -hmm. out to someone else if they don't click with me. Mm -hmm. Never took it personal. It was just like, oh, totally. I get it. Yeah. I, yeah. And kudos to that person who recognized mm -hmm. it too, because it's like, who wants to be in a session Neither one of you want to be in a session if you know you don't click. Yeah. The yeah. therapist doesn't want to be there with you if you don't aren't getting anything out of it. Yeah. Because um, our first rule of thumb is do no harm. So, yeah. 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 And wasting your time and money is doing harm. Yep. <laughs> um, how do you... Let's get into finding a therapist a little bit and some okay. of those. Um, how do you... If you're like, okay, I'm feeling kind of off something's up. My mm -hmm. friend said like, Hey, you've been off lately. You, what you get, what you doing about it? Yeah. How do you start to look for somebody? What do you start to look for? You Google open space. <laughs> <therapy collective. laughs> I've always wanted to do that. Um, no, you could do a simple Google search of a uh, therapist in your area mm -hmm. and that will give you the number one site. I think that pops up is psychology today, mm -hmm. uh, dot com. Mm -hmm. We get paid nothing to mention no. this. Um, but that's just a real reality. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the first one will come up and then you can search in there. Otherwise you just do a Google search in your area. Google's pretty good at naming businesses and therapists and private practice. Mm -hmm. Also, you can check with your insurance. Mm -hmm. Um, even if you are, on uh, what is a state insurance, mm -hmm. county insurance, mm -hmm. All any health insurance, you can contact the customer service mm -hmm. and ask them if they have a list of psychotherapists or psychiatrists or psychologists. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I tend to push psychotherapists more, but people are like, they don't really know the difference. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. So psychiatrists dispenses prescription. Mm -hmm. Psychologists tend to do talk therapy, mm -hmm. social and social workers and are also psychotherapists. So psychotherapists and social workers, they have a different, a lot of uh, approaches to therapy. Um, a straight up psychotherapist may have some modalities like art, dance, music, um, drama, mm -hmm. play therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say do Google research what type of therapist you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know, then I would just say, just go with a psychotherapist. <laughs> and start there. Yeah. Um, and you don't need to know the difference. You and don't. There, there are plenty of psychiatrists or psych NPs or mm -hmm. psychologists that also will do therapy. Right. And so you just got to kind of... That's why I always push psychotherapists because I feel like there's more to choose from. Mm -hmm. And if you need medication, the psychotherapist can refer you to a mm -hmm. psychiatrist and they can work together. Mm -hmm. So you have like a team. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'd say... Google search yeah, or talk to people, mm -hmm. talk to your tribe. Hey, do you like your therapist? See if they would 
you know, not may not necessarily have the same therapist, but then maybe there's a therapist in the same office that you mm-hmm. can go to so you don't feel like you and your friend mm-hmm. are just seeing the same person. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a good point. Like, if your friend has a good therapist, you can call up your friend's therapist and be like, hey, I don't want to see you because maybe this is too close, or maybe you do, mm-hmm. depending on the dynamic. But do you have somebody you recommend? Right. Because if you have access to a good therapist, they're only going to recommend other good therapists. Yep. And that's something that we do, Mm -hmm. regardless if it's ethical or legal, we do refer out. Mm -hmm. Um, We don't want to see anyone in a situation where they're needing a therapist and then they don't know where to go. So we're quite helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine a therapist being helpful. I know. (laughs) It's shocking. I know. Shocking. (laughs) Sometimes I think people don't think that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're feeling... You're feeling off. You start Google searching, Psychology Today searching. Um, inclusive therapists is also one that brings on therapists that are anti-racist, anti-oppressive, um, much more activist mindset. You have to apply to be a part of that. We also don't get paid for them, mm-hmm. um, but they're a really great one. And also Open Space Therapy Collective. <laughs> dot com. Okay. Um, so it's. You're talking on the phone with people. What are you asking? Um, hmm. I would say most of the time when you reached out to a therapist and you're going to have a phone consult, you, they kind of have an idea that you're looking for a therapist and you can say to them, I'm feeling this kind of way. Is this something you work with? Or you can ask questions, you mm-hmm. know. How long have you been in practice? You know, what's your expertise or who are the type of people you work with? How is your approach to therapy? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and see what they say. Mm-hmm. I think that's generally a good. Yeah. It's not going to be a long phone conversation. Mm-hmm. It's not a therapy session. It's literally 15 minutes, maybe tops 20, mm-hmm. just to feel out um, if this person and you kind of click Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's trying to figure out what it's going to be like to be in therapy Mm -hmm. with them Um, and you can even ask them like what is it like to sit in a room with you or what is it like to be in therapy with you Mm -hmm. um that's always a good question yeah you also want to be looking for how the therapist is responding Mm -hmm. are they hearing what you're saying Mm -hmm. or are they talking about what they want to talk about do they sound confident and calm in like those struggles that you're bringing into the room, or does it seem like it's making you, them nervous? Or does it do they sound scripted? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does it sound like, oh man, that sounds really hard, Jimmy? Gee, <laughs> that must feel bad. Like you don't also like you want somebody with a personality because mm-hmm. this is going to be somebody you'll spend a lot of time with. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You do that. Oh, gee. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. You want to make sure it's not scripted. You don't feel like it's scripted that they actually hear you. Um, they can resonate even or empathize with your situation. Sound as authentic as possible. And you don't want to, don't feel like you have to put on your best show. Like, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to pretend that everything is okay because you're seeking therapy. It's not mm-hmm. everything is not okay. You just need to reach out. So, mm-hmm. be you mm-hmm. and see how they respond. Yeah, yeah. What as you're starting therapy? Mm-hmm. What are some of the common misconceptions that people will come in with if they've only had like therapy when they were younger or mm-hmm. a weird experience with therapy or haven't had any kind of therapy before? Mm-hmm. What are some common things that you hear? Uh, I'm broken. I'm not lovable. Uh, I have must have a problem because, or a mental diagnosis because I need a therapist. No, you can see a therapist just because you want to figure out your life, mm-hmm. figure out what the next steps are. You're transitioning from high school to college, or you're transitioning from one job to another, or transitioning from a big cross-country move. Mm-hmm. Um, but I tend to hear a lot of the, uh, I'm not good enough. Uh, I, you know, just a lot of things that was put on them growing up 
-hmm. that's not even their words. Mm -hmm. I always say our negative thoughts come from someplace. It's being heavily criticized. Even if the person had good intentions when you were growing up, in their world, the way it was said and the way you received it, mm -hmm. it became a criticism. And long after they stop, we continue it for them. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's just to debunk some things that you grew up with so you can be you, mm -hmm. be the most authentic you. Mm -hmm. So. You don't have to have a mental illness or, di you know, you don't have to have a diagnosis of, of depression or anxiety or substance. It can just be growth. Yeah. I want to grow mm -hmm. and I'm feeling a little stagnant. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot and something we talk about is um, people will come into therapy being like, okay, well, I'm here. So I have to instantly tell you about all the big, deep, dark, scary things. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not true. Don't do that. Mm -mm. Like you got to build a relationship. It takes time. Mm -hmm. um, there's no way to do therapy wrong. Like mm -hmm. going in and like talking about stuff that you're not ready to talk about yet. It, you, you're not failing therapy. You're just being present and going with what works. And mm -hmm. there's no way to fail therapy. There's no way to do it therapy right. That actually can overwhelm you. And then you may not go back to therapy because you're going to be like, well, I tried it and I just felt worse than I did when I went in, not realizing that you were feeling vulnerable mm -hmm. and you shared a lot. And then what happens when you share a lot and you're feeling vulnerable, you leave there and it just intensifies. And then you start criticizing yourself like I did therapy wrong or I just can't get it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So don't go with that. It's yeah. okay. Uh, I've had a client just sit with me mm -hmm. like 50 minutes. 30 minutes of it was, we just sat there. Mm -hmm. It's fine. And it, that's what they needed. Yeah. And that's how you take it slow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if your community or your friends or your family thinks that therapy is bullshit, but you're wanting to try it? How do you navigate that? You know, it's interesting. I, I coming from a black woman's perspective, and Caribbean, our family's from Jamaica, and growing up with, so I'm what would be considered a progressive thinker when it comes <laughs> to therapy because I embrace it. But growing up, I have like family members who operate with the mentality of, this is house business. You don't talk your dirty laundry to anyone you just figure it out, or that's just how uncle and aunt so-and-so is. Just ignore their behavior and you deal with whatever. And I was just like, no, it's not, that's wrong. So mm -hmm. I just, I went into therapy and I didn't tell anyone. Mm -hmm. It's my business, mm -hmm. it's none of theirs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's how I approach it. And I, and I think it was for the better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have to share it. if. It doesn't feel like that's a safe thing mm -mm. or it's going to be criticized. Um, this is a thing that you're doing for you and mm -hmm. that's enough. That's it. And yeah. I literally started in college mm -hmm. and I learned a lot, a lot. <laughs> Whoa, really? That's why I did so-and-so. So, you know, it was a positive experience for me. Now, somebody might go into it by themselves, don't say anything to the family and they didn't have such a positive experience. Please don't be hard on yourself. Please recognize that that was still a successful therapy session because now you're realizing that there are things that you need to debunk mm -hmm. from your upbringing and that you just met like a moment where your brain and heart couldn't agree <laughs> on what needs to be debunked and when. So just give yourself a break and then you can always go back to it again. And also, it might also be that therapist you didn't click with. And, you know, it could be a very, very bull, what's the word I'm looking, various reasons, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess the key is not to be hard on yourself. Yeah. 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 Which not being hard on yourself is a hard thing, thing to, to do. do. As asking for help <laughs> is also yeah. a hard thing to it's do. Hard. Uh, that's another time when you think you might need to see a therapist, learning how to ask for help. Mm -hmm. That's uh, when they say awareness is the first step, right? Yeah. So sometimes people go to therapy just because they're like, I don't know how to feel my emotions. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to ask for help. I don't, 
I don't people very well. I'm always giving to others, but it's very hard for me to ask for what I need. Mm -hmm. Those are all real things. And you have to go and work on everything at once. No. <laughs> no. And not every therapist is going to be able to treat everything at once. Right. right? We are not magicians. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> like there's, if let's say you're a parent and you're wanting to come in and work on depression, come and see me. And if you want to work on your parenting, go see Debbie. Like I'm not going to be able to really help you with that. Um, and your therapist should know their limits. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. How long should someone be in therapy? As long as you feel you need to be. Mm -hmm. um, a good therapist will check in with you on your progress. How do you feel your progress is going? At least three to six months. Like, mm -hmm. if it's if it seems like it's a short term time, it might be like in three months or as you, well, you correct me because I kind of like, I have clients that I, they're literally, they refuse to <laughs> leave. And I'm like, but your, your progress, your progress is doing really good. No, no, I still need you. Mm -hmm. And so I see them maybe once every two weeks mm -hmm. or once a month. Mm -hmm. Right. So it depends, mm -hmm. but a good therapist is going to check in with you to see how you feel about your growth. I would say be very leery of anyone who literally you've been seeing for decades and mm -mm. Mm -mm. and you're in the same state. Like mm -mm. I had a friend who came to me and asked me because their sister mm -hmm. was in that situation and it turned out that this um, psychiatrist was just had them on too many meds and it was making them confused. And so she had to step in. And then she realized she's been seeing this ther psychiatrist for like 20 years and she still was in the same state. Mm -hmm. So I would say a good handle is when you can see a therapist is checking with you, being proactive, say, let's do a check-in. Let's see where we are right now. How are you feeling from when you first started to see me to today? Where do you think you're at? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, that's a good benchmark. Yeah. Yeah, but time is going to be really different for everybody, mm -hmm. right? Like, and it's whether you need three months or you need five years has doesn't mean anything. Like yeah. a lot of people feel like, well, I need to graduate therapy to show that I'm better. It's like, no, that, that that's not how this works. <laughs> that's not how it works. No. Um, and like paying attention to how you're doing mm -hmm. in the process. If you're in the same place after you've been seeing somebody for six months and you don't see any growth and you're therapist isn't talking to you about growth and what you're trying to do it might be time to like if it's comfortable have a really hard conversation with the therapist about like yo nothing is happening here mm -hmm. um or it may be time to like try somebody else yeah um and i know in our practice we have people that we'll see for a variety of times and um often we'll see somebody for we weekly for however long they need and then when they're feeling um like they don't need us anymore. Like often clients will be like, oh yeah, so this thing came up and then I heard you say like in my head that I should really like do some deep breathing instead of go down this anxiety obsessive thinking spiral. Yeah. And that's a good sign of like you've started to integrate the work that you're doing in therapy when that's starting to come up for you. And so then maybe you decrease a little bit. Yep. And then after a while you decrease a little bit more. And then mm -hmm. it's just kind of on a check-in monthly basis as needed. Basis. And I think that's the healthy route to go. Mm -hmm. um, our goal is never to make someone feel like they can't live without mm -hmm. seeing us. That's mm -hmm. not our goal at all. Mm -hmm. Just here to help you be the best you. Yeah. And being leery of somebody who <laughs> is really wanting to have a very tenured relationship. Mm hmm there are, I will, so my, part of why I got into therapy is because my mom um, had a lot of mental health struggles and had a wonderful psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. um, and she saw the psychiatrist for 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, but her growth and her ability to function in the world was remarkably, um, like, minefields 
like amazing. Mm -hmm. That's not the right term, but whatever, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, and so she kept seeing him because she liked the type of treatment that he was providing for her and mm -hmm. she always got better. Yeah. And if, but it would, they would go from like every, like once a month, every three months, every mm -hmm. six months. Mm -hmm. um, but that was a relationship for her that was really helpful. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't, tr he was just there, especially, you know, 30 years is a very long time. But like would just step in when she needed him. Mm. He was never trying to get her to come in all of the time and do all of yeah. sorts of stuff. Yeah, no, I, I like that approach better. Um, I've heard some horror stories, and I've heard that, and that to me is kind of like, depend on the person's struggles. That's more like someone. It's like I don't say medic, medic. Uh, medication but it's almost like a coping skill and your therapist becomes part of your coping skill so when you're really having a hard time you can go to a live person as opposed to coping skills that are just activities mm -hmm. so to speak so yeah and you'll know the difference the longer you're with someone um, like I said the benchmark is if they're also checking in with you see where you feel you're making some growth if they're actually telling you after sessions hey this is what i heard you exhibited and if they're reminding you so let's say you're working on boundaries and they said i heard that you're actually actively practicing mm -hmm. setting healthy boundaries for yourself how does that feel that's a good benchmark because they're constantly keeping you on task with your goals mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that's a really important one that's well said yeah phew <laughs> starting therapy can be really scary mm -hmm. and it can feel really overwhelming especially when you're not in a good place but hopefully some of this helped um if you have questions about starting therapy let's say you don't even want to see any of us but you just have questions like call or email us we're happy to to help you figure out how to navigate that because mm -hmm. um, this is intense and a lot of it happens behind closed doors mm -hmm. and so people don't really see the honest experience or hear the honest experience they hear goofy podcasts like this <laughs> oh i got one for you maybe you i'll ask you this question mm -hmm. so if someone says oh i can't afford therapy what do you say well it depends on the context i mean sometimes like legit you can't afford it and then we will help find you somebody that you can't afford mm -hmm. um and other times it's because there's money anxiety and that is scarcity mindset is something that needs to get worked on in therapy um, sometimes it's, and often it's like wavering on trying to figure out if you actually want to do this or not, or if you actually like this therapist or not. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a tangible thing that we can point to and be like, it's either the subcontext for me in those cases is, I don't know if you're worth this, mm -hmm. or I don't know that I'm worth this. Mm -hmm. Um, good point. And to really kind of just sit in that discomfort. Mm -hmm. um, and other times it's just kind of testing out the waters and talking to people and maybe like dipping a toe in, but not, I don't want to do therapy right now. And so that's an easy way to say like, oh, it's a money thing. Yeah. Um, so I know you can answer that better than I can because I always go on the side of there's a time and place for when therapy is right. Mm -hmm. And so if you're using the the uh, so money thing as the reasons why you delay in therapy, I think that's a sign that you're just not ready to make that leap just yet mm -hmm. or that step forward. Mm -hmm. And that's not a bad thing. Yeah, it is what it is. Research, do your research yeah. until you feel comfortable and then mm -hmm. you can take the next step. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> If you have any questions, uh, please reach out. Upcoming in April, we are going to be starting a mindfulness pop-in group that Debbie is going to lead, um, which will be 30 minutes. You can come and pop in as you want. Um, we'll have more details about that coming up, so please pay attention to our social medias. Um, email us, and we're happy to tell you more information. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We'd love to hear your thoughts on today's topic. Leave a comment below or email us at communications at Open Space Therapy Collective.
You can follow us on all of the social medias. And if you're in California looking for a therapist, visit our website at openspacetherapycollective.com and book a free intro call with one of our therapists to see if we are the right fit for you. My Therapist is Out is an Open Space Therapy Collective podcast. Our therapists are Kristen Crow, Debbie White, and Renee Johnson. Clinical consultant, Jenny Nigro. Communications coordinator, Riley Andreessen. Marketing consultant, M. Issa Messaging. Administrative assistant, Mirza Ruiz. And our podcast editing is done by Smash and Grab Studio. 